In this film, we want to present our Paludi culture project Moosweite. The subjects of our project are very small organisms, peat mosses, also called sphagnum. Peat mosses are mosses that form peat over hundreds of years in natural bogs. We try to cultivate peat mosses as an agricultural crop to harvest the biomass. This sphagnum biomass has similar properties than slightly humified sphagnum peat, so-called white peat. In experiments and in the production, sphagnum biomass has been proved as a high-quality raw material for substrate. It has a potential to substitute peat in horticulture, but where to get the raw material? Since 2004, we are developing a method for the sustainable production of sphagnum biomass in paludiculture, so-called sphagnum farming. Meanwhile, our sphagnum farming site is 17 hectares in size. The site is situated in the northwest of Germany. Here, 84% of all bogs in Germany are situated, but they are mainly drained and used for agriculture, forestry and peat extraction. The bogs are mainly used as grassland, also in the peatland Hankhauser Moor, where our sphagnum farming site is situated. How to convert the bog grassland into a sphagnum farming site? The first step is to remove the degraded and nutrient-rich topsoil. We use the material to build causeways. From climatic point of view, it is important to minimize this topsoil removal. Next to the sphagnum production fields and causeways, also irrigation ditches has to be installed. The distance between the irrigation ditches depends on the water conductivity of the peat. In the Hankhauser Moor, we use 10 meters distance. After site preparation, sphagnum fragments or hoop plants were applied mechanically or manually as founder material. Here we use the high regeneration ability of sphagnum. From small plant parts are growing new moss plants and building a new dense sphagnum lawn. After one and a half years, a dense, well-growing sphagnum lawn had developed. Even if this biomass can keep the water like a sponge, a constantly high and stable water table has to be ensured for optimal growth and carbon fixation. To investigate the development of the sphagnum farming site, we monitor the water table and the cover and the thickness of the sphagnum lawn, as well as other vegetation and permanent plots. To find the permanent plots back, they were measured with a differential GPS. Our investigations show an annual sphagnum biomass accumulation of about 4 tons dry mass per hectare. After 3 to 5 years, the sphagnum lawn can be harvested. We used an excavator standing on the causeway. The excavator has a mowing basket which cut only the top part of the peat mosses and leave the lower parts for their regeneration. The harvested material is loaded onto a damper which piles it up for temporary storage before it is sold as founder material, more the green parts, or for horticultural use, more the brown parts. We have four partners in the Mosweit project. The first is the peat company Torfwerk Mokutu Ramslu. It is the owner of the area in the Hankhauser Moor and work on the technical implementation. The second partner is the University Oldenburg, which investigates the dragonflies. The third partner is the University of Rostock, which investigates the greenhouse gas balance of the whole site. They found out that the greenhouse gas emissions can be significantly reduced by 15 or even more tons CO2 equivalents per hectare and year by sphagnum farming in comparison to former bog grassland use. And the fourth partner is the University of Greifswald, which is coordinating the project, managing the site and investigating the vegetation. Next to the peat mosses, also other rare bog species established at the sphagnum farming site, such as sundew or bell heather, but also rare dragonflies or spider species use the sphagnum farming site as a surrogate habitat. One challenge is the founder material. So far, we use sphagnum from natural habitats for our experiments. In our parallel project, Mooszucht, we are looking for the super moss, the best growing moss under the conditions in northwestern Germany. For this, we collected small samples from 12 sphagnum species all over Europe.
we pre-selected them in climate chamber experiments before we tested the best growing mosses in the field. Another problem at our Swacken farming site is that irrigation water is nutrient-rich. The mosses take up nutrients, but not all, so unwanted vascular plants can establish. They have to be mown regularly. To reduce the input of nutrients, we recently installed filter basins with cattail and reed to pre-treat the irrigation water. But is sphagnum farming also an alternative from an economic point of view? My name is Sabine Wichmann. I'm working on the economics of sphagnum farming. And uh, what we see on our pilot site is that sphagnum farming is already today profitable if you use the sphagnum biomass for establishing new sphagnum farming sites or for restoration. And it's also profitable for the orchid sector. So with high yields uh, harvested here in the Hankhauser Moor, uh, you can uh, cover your production costs. Concerning the competitiveness with peat, uh, we see that peat is just too, too cheap at the moment. But if the end consumer is willing to pay a third charge of 10% uh, for the end product, so for the pot of flour, for instance, then you can cover your production costs and compete with peat already today. To replace all white peat in the German horticulture by Sphagnum biomass, Sphagnum farming on 35,000 hectares would be necessary. In northwestern Germany, recently there are about 100,000 hectares bog grassland. In our projects, we developed a well working method to produce Sphagnum biomass sustainably. The next step to scale up sphagnum farming and polyculture must be the adjustment of political frameworks, because peatlands must be wet.